a warm welcome back to my channel this is due to popular demand i have been asked to review the process for moving to canada give a demo and that is what i shall be doing today so i shall be reviewing the different ways to immigrate to canada i shall briefly touch on the provincial nominee program but my main focus will be uh, immigrating as a skilled worker and then I will give a demo of the actual website to submit your application. I will show you how to navigate the website as well as walk you through a questionnaire you can do to assess your points, okay? As a disclaimer, I am not an immigration official, nor do I represent any government office. The information I shall be giving you today is based on my experience and what I use to immigrate to Canada. I have been here for 12 years and hopefully this will be beneficial for you. So I have prepared a PowerPoint to get started, just a couple of slides before we move into the actual demo. So the different ways you can move to Canada. The first one here is as a student. Now in Canada, when they are assessing your points, um, they will consider your education and you do score higher points if you studied in Canada. So if you had your bachelor, master's or PhD in Canada, they will award you a certain a number of points. So if you want to move to Canada, you can either come as a student and then after you graduate, you can apply for uh, permanent residence. The next option there is uh, the provincial nominee and we'll cover that in the next slide. Number three is as a skilled worker, which is also through the express entry process. And number four is uh, being sponsored by a family member who is already here, is uh, more than 18 years, uh, is a permanent resident or citizen, okay? Now for the provincial nominee program, um, the program is for workers uh, who have the skills, education and work experience to contribute to the economy of a specific province or territory. So what they're saying there, this is province based. So for example, if I choose, I wanna move to Ontario. Ontario has uh, different requirements and so would all the other provinces. So the provincial nominee program um, would also want you as the applicant to live in that province as a requirement. And you should be uh, you should be interested in becoming a permanent resident of Canada. That's one of the requirements. And as I mentioned, for each province or territory, they have their own rules and requirements. And they can maybe target a specific demographic, for example, students, semi-skilled workers, skilled workers, or business people. You can also immigrate as a skilled worker, and this is through the express entry. So some of the requirements you need to have to get this process started. Uh, for status, you need a valid passport because they will ask you for some information from it. You must have a language test to come to Canada. And those test results must be uh, two years or less. Um, you can earn extra points if you have a French uh, language experience. Uh, so there you can add an additional 50 points. And I think there are additional points you can earn around that. We can look at the website. Uh, your educational credential assessment report, that is if you did not study in Canada and want to use education uh, to give you points uh, through this program. You would also need a proof of funds and they do stipulate how much you need for an individual versus a family. And then if you're coming in through the provincial nominee, you need that nominee and their website does uh, detail how you do get that nominee and you include that information in your final application. And if you do have a job offer, you would also include that. So the last two here are optional. 
So how the express entry works? So the express entry is an online system that is used to manage applications for permanent residents through the skilled workers program, right? And there are two ways to find out if you are eligible for the program. And one, you can answer a few questions to see if you meet that minimum requirement, uh, which is a certain number of points, and I shall be going through that. Or you can read uh, the detailed requirements for each program. I think um, the questionnaire is much easier and simpler to understand, so we shall go ahead and do a demo of the website and how to calculate your points. So after clicking that link, this is the site you should arrive at, www.canada.ca, and you select your language, if it's English or French, um, and that is up here, so you can select French there. Now when you scroll down, this is the one-stop shop website where they do manage all things government, immigration, travel, health, benefits, so everything is under one roof. So we are interested in immigration and citizenship, so we select that. We should land on this page where they post all the current information in regards to traveling to Canada. And then as you scroll down, service information, you will select immigrate. If you're coming to study, that's a different case. So for this purpose, I select immigrate. Okay, now this should take us to this page and um, you'd see various options here. So service and information, they do give you information for the express entry and provincial nominee. There are other programs that you can immigrate by. So please feel free to look around this website and see maybe a different program works better for you if you do not meet the points required for the express entry. So I will briefly look at the provincial nominee just because I talked about it in the presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, provincial nominee, you'll get information here about how it works. Uh, we've talked about that, you know, the program is for workers who have a certain skill, education, uh, that's uh, specific to contribute to the economy of a specific province, and they want to live in that province, and their intention is to become a permanent resident uh, and settle in Canada permanently, which I think is most applicants here. And then it's targeted, so each province would be targeting a certain group, either students, business people, skilled workers, or semi-skilled workers, right? And then you can find additional information here as to how the process works and what you need to have to complete this process. And uh, feel free to go in here, you know, scroll to see what information you need. At the bottom here, they do have each province. Um, for example, I select Ontario. They will tell you what Ontario is looking for. Uh, they want to nominate people, for example. Uh, Ontario's nominee program is currently accepting applications under the following streams, so French speaking skilled workers stream, uh, human capital uh, priority stream, skilled trade stream, and entrepreneur stream, right? So if you click each of those, they will bring you down here. You should see human capital. Um, and down here, they do explain what uh, each of those streams Ontario uh, is focusing on, what they mean. Uh, so feel free to <clears throat> look around in here. All right. Very informative. So we shall go back to um, the main site here. This was for the provincial nominee. And I will go back to the express entry, which is what uh, this video will focus on. So I select uh, express entry here, scroll down. 
it does tell you uh, how the program works and this is where we'll eventually get to to look at the assessment but it does tell you beyond um, what documents you'd require at uh, each point of the application so um, documents you know you can be working to get ready if you do not have you would need police certificates uh, the medical exam they will let you know when to take that so you do not need to get ready for that they will tell you when and where you will need the proof of funds as part of your questionnaire uh, birth certificate comes later as long uh, uh, as well as other documents for example um, use of a representative if you're using a lawyer uh, and common law union forms uh, if you are marriage uh, married your marriage certificate if you are divorced or legally separated you will require a declaration of some sort um, if there's a death certificate or an adoption certificate uh, so those are documents just for you to get thinking about um, but for the application itself here for the profile you will need your travel documents or a passport um, valid passport you will need uh, language test results so you need to get started on the language uh, tests now because you will need them for that initial application and they do award you points you'll need uh, proof of education if you studied in Canada and if elsewhere, you will need um, an educational credential assessment report that they can guide you on how to obtain that. If you're coming through the provincial nominee program, you will need to have that nomination. And then if you have a job offer, you will need to provide proof of that. And for everybody coming in, you need to know, you need to have a proof of funds so if we scroll back up here um, let's see okay those were the extra documents required i will go back to the previous page okay so it'll tell me how the express entry works it does give a detailed here information as to this is a way for you to find out uh, you can either do a questionnaire or you can read through the detailed information under each programs so i will select to do a questionnaire and uh, um, it'll guide me through the different questions it tells me here it'll take 10 to 15 minutes to fill out the form they shall ask questions about my nationality about my age my language ability my family members my education my work experience and if I have a job offer so scroll down and right here uh, you can check your eligibility. So this is where we shall take the questionnaire. Um, let's see. Based on this profile, the one you're going to take, if you meet the requirements, you will be put in a pool of candidates for immigration and possibly invited to apply to immigrate. Now you take the questionnaire. You have points uh, based on the questionnaire. If you meet the cutoff threshold, they will invite you to apply. So the more points you have, the better. And if you don't, they put you in a pool. If they drop the number of points that you need to apply and you meet that qualification, they go and they request you, they invite you to apply, and then you can start the process so the higher the points you have the better you get called uh, immediately you're at the top of the list right so you click here check your eligibility the first question here if you know the province you want to live in uh, you can select it here so for example i choose ontario um, then i click on next and then Canadian official language is English and French. 
and they ask you, uh, you need to submit language test results for all programs under the express entry. So even if English is your first language, you will need to do the English test and submit those results. So they ask you, which language test did you take for your first official language? So assuming I selected English as my first official language and I did the IELTS exam, I select that. I click on next. So which date did you take this test? Remember we say that the test has to be taken in the last uh, two years or so two years or less. So I will select uh, 2020, the year 2020. It can let me select that. Just a second here, 2020, and I select uh, June 1st. June 1st or 2nd, that's okay. First there, okay. I hit next. And then it asks me now for the scores in the different sections, right? There's speaking, listening, reading, and writing. So I will make a guess here. So maybe for speaking, I know how to talk in English, converse well, I choose a nine. Uh, listening, I will choose maybe an 8.5. Reading, I shall select also an 8.5 and writing I select uh, also 8.5 uh, then I hit next so do you have any other language results uh, so did you select you had a second official language I don't most people probably just pick one so I will select none if you do have French please uh, mark that so I click next and they ask in the last three years, how many years of skilled work experience do you have in Canada? So it must be full time or equivalent. If you have part time, it must be equivalent or full time. So like most people, I've never worked in Canada, so I select none. And they ask during this period, which national occupation classification, also known as the NOC level, is most of the experience in? If you do not have any Canadian work experience during this period, please select none of the above. So I will select none of the above. I hit next. And then they ask in the last 10 years, how many years of skilled work experience do you have? And this is in general, not in Canada. So it must have been continuous, paid, and or full time. And if it's part time, you need that to be equivalent of the full time. Right, and then you choose uh, uh, how many years here. So maybe you choose two to three. And then in the last five years, do you have at least two years of experience in one of these job uh, or skilled uh, trades? So industrial maintenance, supervisory, processing, chef, butcher. Uh, and then if you are not sure of the NOC number of your job you can find it they do give you the link and i don't uh, so i select none so i move here if you do have please select that um, okay i hit next how much money in canadian dollars will you be bringing to canada and if you click on the question mark there, it, that, it, it tells you, you know, you want to see how much money you should bring uh, dependent on your uh, family size. That doesn't work at the moment. Let's see. For some reason it says I'm not connected. But if you do have, uh, if you are able to go in there, there should be a, a table that shows you um, how much money you require and uh, you can convert it to local currency, which should be Canadian dollars. So you can make that selection, but assuming you do have that information already, I will select there, assuming it's just me. How many family members do I have? It's just me, so I will select one. So I select next. 
do you have a valid job offer in Canada? I do not. Uh, so I select no. Hit next. 1980. 1980. I think if you're less than 30, you get more points. Um, so let's select December 1 and um, what is the highest level of education you have earned in Canadian degrees? Diploma or certificate or have had uh, an educational credential assessment done? Uh, so for those that did not go to school in Canada, you need an assessment done. Uh, it must be from an approved agency and uh, it must be in the last five years. So if you did not earn a Canadian degree, diploma or certificate, you may need to have uh, your foreign education assessed by an agency approved by Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada. And that's the department that's responsible for immigration. They must show that uh, it is valid and equal to a completed Canadian credential, right? And you can always click the question mark for more information and how to go about getting that assessment done. But assuming you have done that and you select, you know, um, you have completed maybe a bachelor's. Hit next. And then you can check all that apply. I have studied full time in Canada for two or more years. No. So assuming you haven't, I have at least two years of full-time work experience in Canada. No, you don't. I have a relative in Canada who is 18 years older, a citizen or permanent resident of Canada, uh, and is my parent, child, grandparent, uh, grandchild, sibling, uncle, and niece or nephew. Um, assuming you don't know anybody like most people moving here, I select none of the above. I hit next. And your marital status, I select uh, never married. I am single, assuming it's just you. If you have any different classification, please select the appropriate one. I hit next. And it assigns me a number here. So this is my reference code after doing the questionnaire. And it tells me, you know, step one, record your personal reference code here. So take that. And it tells you the code will expire May 24th, 2021. Today is March 25th. So it's about um, two months. So two months out. And then uh, if it does expire, you need to come back in and redo the questionnaire and they will issue you with a new reference code. Uh, and then step two, you print this just for your records. And then step three, you will need to submit an online profile. Um, and this is uh, your application that will give you, um, you will use to track. You will need an electronic key to uh, for uh, the connection to be secure so if you do not have a key you register to get your key here especially if you're a new user which uh, most people will be if you already have a key and you're returning user maybe to see the status of your application you can log in here and then step four when you sign in your electronic uh, credential known as your key, you'll be automatically directed to your account. You will be prompted to register for an account if you are a first time user. Returning users will be directed straight to their account. Once you are signed in, then select express entry to continue. Okay, so the initial was more like an intake. Now you're going to start the actual application. So you enter your reference code after you select express entry, you will be asked to enter your personal reference code. A personal reference code is located at the top of this page and looks something like this. So I have showed you what that is up here. Sorry. So that's the NE number up here. Um, and then once you have entered your personal reference code, you will be guided through the following steps to complete your profile. 
complete the Express Entry Profile Builder, and review your profile, and submit your profile. So after you submit your profile, you will see a page that confirms that your profile has been submitted. That means you've been entered into the system. You will have more information on the next step. Shortly after you submit, you will also receive a confirmation in your account, right? So that gets the process started and that is all you need just to get in there and have that linkage to the ministry and you can start uh, processing your application, okay? So hopefully that was helpful and you will go ahead and get started. Okay. So once you've completed that profile, they will notify you uh, if they've invited you to apply for permanent residence. So before you apply for the permanent residency, you must receive that invitation, right? You'll receive an invitation to apply. So once you get that invitation, it is only valid for 90 days, so you should submit your documents before that 90-day period is over. And that is why I was saying you should start by looking for some of the documents, like background checks. If you've lived in different countries, you want to put that together, right? If you need uh, um, to verify documentation, your education, make sure you do that, so that when you're submitting your file, it's complete. And that ensures that uh, your processing for permanent residence will take the shortest time possible. Okay, so you will need that key that was assigned to you when you are completing your profile. You sign into the account and you click the link to apply for permanent residence under Express Entry. Then you make sure, submit all your documents, as we've said, to shorten the duration of waiting before you get that residence. Um, and all your answers must be complete. Make sure you fill what's mandatory. Don't leave anything blank. Um, and you can save your information on the form and go back as often as you need to. Okay. And... Just to let you know the fees that are attached for your application. So if it's just a single application, that's 1,325,000, ,000, and that is in Canadian dollars. And if you have a spouse, it's the same amount. For every dependent child you have, it's 225. Okay, and you can check all this information, you know, after uh, on the page, you know, what happens after you've completed your profile and uh, when you get to be invited to apply for your residence and then any updated information as regards to how they are processing the new immigration requests and any information you may need to know. Okay, so I hope all in all this was helpful and you know how to get started and what the process is. You do not have to use a lawyer to do this. You do not need to use a representative to do this. I did this myself and so can you. There's only one intake point. So this makes it so much easier and it's very different than the US one. I think the US you need a lawyer, but in Canada you can do this uh, pretty much from any country and you're guaranteed to be in the system and in the process. And uh, mine took eight months. I did do mine from the US. Um, it took eight months and it was fairly smooth. And I've had the same thing from people immigrating from all over the world, right? The process is streamlined. So I wish you all the best and thank you for tuning into my channel. I hope this was helpful. Please remember to like and subscribe. I will be making more content and hopefully we will see you in Canada. Thank you.